In class, we noted that fertility is lower in wealthier countries than in poorer countries. And we remarked that this is a puzzle because we would think that people like children. If you like children, as you get richer, you should want to have more of them. So why is it that fertility declines as countries grow richer? To explain this puzzle, we need to think about the trade-off between investments in child quality, which you could think of as a multi-dimensional concept that contains all the different pieces of human capital. The trade-off between this, child quality, and child quantity, number of children you have. In particular, there's a budget constraint, and you have to decide, given the limited resources that you have available, about how much you want to invest in child quality versus child quantity. This is what the Becker quality quantity model is useful for understanding and thinking about. We'll assume there's a single agent who is making decisions about his standard of living, the number of children that he'd like to have, and the quality that each of those children has. To keep this model simple and for its points to be tractable, we'll assume that every child has the exact same quality. This rules out the kind of issues that we spoke about in the gender unit and is an unrealistic but useful simplification to make the answer to our question about why fertility would decline with income clear and tractable. The Becker quality quantity model assumes that the single agent has preferences over the standard of living S, the number of children N, and the quality per child Q. The total quality units that the agent then is buying or choosing is n, the number of children, times quality per child q. So n times q gives us the total quality the agent consumes. The agent has a fixed income i, which they must allocate then between expenditures on their children. Suppose an individual unit of child quality has a price pc, then PC times N times Q is the total expenditure on children. The other thing you spend your money on is your standard of living. It has a price PS, so PS times S is the total expenditure on standard of living. Add those two together, and we get what we have right here for a budget constraint. We're going to be interested in trade-offs between child quality and child quantity. To do that, we'll rearrange the budget constraint to um, be able to draw how it relates child quality, Q, to the number of children, N. Rearranging that, we'll see this is not a line, it's a curve. Um, and here we've drawn one example. The next challenge our agent faces is to decide both on a quality of each child, Q, and the number of children, N. In class, we discussed why Q and N cannot be perfect substitutes. And in fact, preferences must be more convex than the budget curve. Otherwise, we'd wind up at a corner solution of, say, lots of children with absolutely no quality. And it seems unrealistic to expect that as a uh, long-run equilibrium outcome um, or, or kind of what parents would like to see. Here we've drawn preferences in green, more convex, inner, of the um, budget curve from before, which we've drawn right here, where the preferences are just tangent to our budget curve. It's the place where we find out what the agent's optimal number of children and quality per child are.
the slope of our budget curve reveals the trade-offs the agent must make between Q and N holding S, the standard of living, fixed. It's clearly unsatisfactory to hold S fixed, but I need to stick in two dimensions, so I hope you'll allow me to do that for a graphical presentation here. Interestingly, the prices in the budget constraint imply the trade-off between investments in children and consumption today in income terms. Here we have a budget curve that reflects the trade-off between Q and N given those prices, given our income, given our consumption of standard of living. In this trade-off between Q and N will be different than the trade-off between PC and PS. Meaning then that the implicit or shadow price of consuming more child quality expressed in terms of how much child quantity you have to give up holding your budget fixed will be different than the market price, the trade-off in money terms. So we have a shadow price in this model that differs from the monetary price um, of child investment consumption in the budget constraint. Here, we've drawn the shadow price, the implicit trade-off between Q and N. It's just the slope of the budget curve at the place where the agent chooses um, Q and N. If you think about it, it makes perfect sense that the shadow price, the cost of, say, consuming a little bit more Q in terms of N, will depend on the consumption of Q and N. If I have a lot of kids, adding a little bit more in child quality would be very expensive. If I have a few kids, adding a little bit more in child quality would be relatively less expensive. So the slope, the shadow price of consuming more per child quality will vary based on what amount of Q and N you consume and will be different than the monetary cost of consuming more children. To see that shadow prices vary with consumption, consider two different agents. Agent 1 has preferences given in red Agent 2 has preferences given in green. With Agent 1, given Agent 1's preferences, she chooses a high level of child quality and relatively low fertility compared to Agent 2, who chooses a low level of quality but a high quantity. Now let's think of the shadow prices that each of these two agents face in making their decisions about Q versus N. In this instance, Agent 1, if Agent 1 consumes a little bit more N, quality has to fall very steeply. Whereas consuming a lot more quality requires a relatively little change in N. So up on this part of the budget curve, child quality is relatively cheap. The shadow price of Q is low. I emphasize this because I think people will get confused. So they'll see this line, think it's up and therefore high, so therefore Q must look very expensive. But look at the slope of the line. You can do big changes in Q and really not have to give up much in N at all. Right? That implies then that Q is cheap relative to N. Down here, look at the slope of this line for our agent B. For agent B, a small change in Q necessitates a massive change in N. So here Q is relatively expensive compared to N. This is down here, the shadow price then of Q is very high. 
whereas the shadow price of Q is very low here, and vice versa with respect to N. Now we're set up to think through what happens when incomes increase. We start off in situation zero, where our agent has the budget curve that's the solid line, preferences marked so, an agent winds up at point A, choosing point A with a large number of kids of low quality. Income increases, that moves out, shifts out the budget curve, also changes its shape a little bit. Now I finally have an excuse to not draw a perfect shift. Um, given the agent's preferences, they wind up now in point C, where they're consuming um, much fewer children and much higher quality per child. To understand the intuition of why an agent would have less fertility as they grow richer, let's look at shadow prices. Starting in the initial equilibrium A, we see, oh, you know what, let's make that a different color to make it easier to see we'll go with green. We start off with a shadow price of um, child quality that's very high. Small changes in child quality have to imply needing large changes in fertility out here where person A is. Now, as the household grows richer, look what happens. Suddenly, because of their preferences, we wind up with a situation where the price of child quality relative to quantity declines substantively as the agent gets richer. Thus, we like child quality, we like child quantity, but we move towards the cheaper good when we get rich, when the price changes. So while we like Q and we like N, we get richer because of this change in shadow prices, we end up choosing to consume more Q and less N. It of course doesn't have to go this way, it would depend on what preferences are like. All we're trying to do is use this framework to understand how we can generate this apparently paradoxical result that people get richer but have fewer children despite the fact that they like their children. And our intuition is that the shadow price of child quality falls as agents get richer, inducing them to substitute towards quality and away from quantity, despite getting utility from both of those two goods.